Hello, everybody. This is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes. And today I'm going to be discussing a very important topic for particularly first time home buyers, but even for people who might be looking to move up uh, in a larger house, scale up, and they have to get involved with the banks, which means they need to secure themselves a mortgage. So the topic is how to improve your credit score today so you can get a home mortgage. And we have a special guest, Amon Verma from Secure Credit Advisors. And he's gonna introduce himself a little more and a little more about his company. And before he does that, I just wanna say I met Amon and I thought it was a great service because I meet a lot of people, particularly first time home buyers that wanna buy a house, but when they go to get pre-approved for a mortgage, they're not credit worthy. And if you can avoid that before, it will save you a lot of aggravation and you'll be able to get that house much sooner. So Amon, tell us a little about yourself and your company. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate this opportunity. Um, my company, like Mark said, is Secure Credit Advisors. We help people fix their credit. When I say that, is, I mean is we help remove all negative items off the report. Latenesses, bankruptcy, judgments, collection accounts, you name it, we can get it off. We provide 100% money back guarantee to all our clients. And it's a process. If somebody tells you it's a quick process, it's not going to happen. It takes time. It, it's a legal process. It definitely takes time to do. So I would advise anybody that's looking to purchase a home and get you know, a mortgage is to start this in advance. Don't wait till last minute. And you want to, at least you want to give this about a year, year's worth of time, a year and a half worth of time in order to get where you need to be to get the ideal credit score to get your ideal mortgage rate. Great. Uh, we're going to dive into this in a little more detail. But first, I want to do a little basic housekeeping. Uh, if you're new to the channel, definitely remember to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell on the side so you get all the uh, videos that I produce on a weekly basis sent directly to your inbox. And also like it, hopefully you will, and share it to somebody that you think might have a need for this type of information. The name of the channel is Real Estate 101. All things you need to know about buying and selling residential real estate comes to you directly on a weekly basis. So with that being said, what are things that somebody, again, whether it's a first time home buyer or somebody that is looking to scale up, can do? And what give a little more info about the time frame, six months, three months before your credit score will start reflecting changes in a positive way? Sure. So starting off with that question itself, the process, look, the credit bureaus have about 45 days and they push it to 60 days at times also by sending a generic response to a dispute we send out saying we have started an investigation process, which allows them to add the 15 days to make it a 60 day process. That being said, you would, within 45 days, you start seeing results when we start the work. But to give a significant change, I would say at least a 90 day mark. An average credit repair file would, would be about six to eight months, but we um, keep his balances low, sorry, um, during the process and he needed some time to lower his balances on his credit cards. Those are vital things. So we say about at least a year's time to get your credit completely cleaned up, your credit score. All right, so 90 um, days to see the change. A year would be the, uh, start thinking a year in advance. And that's a great exactly. time too, because most people start shopping for a house about 18 months out so start that process of checking your credit score as well and one thing i've learned from you aman is if your credit score is good or you're trying to move it in that right direction don't go out and buy or lease a car where you're taking out a loan in the middle of it because that can throw like a monkey wrench into the whole thing correct 100 percent. i have i have a couple couple of different tips that i want to advise you about everyone uh, number one first most important thing is always 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 monitor your credit you know what's going on in your bank account. You know what's going on in your investment, but do you know what's going on in your credit? You need to, once a year, you're allowed to get an annual credit report from annualcreditreport.com. Go there. It's a free credit report. It's not a hard inquiry. It doesn't affect your score. Besides that, sign up for Credit Karma to allow you to see the summary of your credit and what's going on to see if there's any trade lines. There's a lot of services out there that allow you to monitor your credit. It's vital, it's very important. Every three months I would advise you to just go online, get a credit report. Um, you can get a soft inquiry credit report so it doesn't hurt your credit right. and just see what's going on. Okay, um, another thing that I'm um, sitting down and having a conversation with Amon before this video, I always was under the impression, and I know you get 
a, you're allowed a free credit report once a year from all of the three credit agencies. Correct. And that's what I was doing. But then Amon told me, you really want to get a basically a average or the three combined. And I believe that you said that annualcreditreport.com combines all three of them. Is that? Yes. Correct? The reason why, Mark, that's a great question. The reason why is the credit bureaus are private entities. They don't speak to one another of what's being reported and what's not right. being reported. Um, and it costs a creditor or somebody who's cre uh, um, reporting on your credit bureau to, it costs them money to do it. So they might not report to all three bureaus. They might report to one bureau. And let's say if you're only checking TransUnion, your TransUnion scores could be in the 700s, but your Equifax score and your experience score could be lower because they're not reporting that new collection on there. So it's vital to check all three bureaus and you can get, like I said, Mark said, a combined report that allows you to see all three reports and all three scores and all the activity on one report and it makes it so much easier. You can, com you can compare it line by line of who's reporting what and how your credit score is being inflected with that. So basically you're being proactive rather than reactive, which That's is always a good thing. thing when buying a house. If you're talking about leasing a car or getting any type of loan, your credit is key and knowing what you have going into it, any transaction is definitely a plus. Um, on that note, what is for you or for mortgage people, what is considered the best score? What should people be trying to get their credit score to? And what would be considered a not so good credit score that you could have a lot of problems? Um, anything under six, 630, 640, it's going to be having giving you problems. You're not going to get a great rate. You're not going to get a competitive rate. Um, above 725, you will be in tier one. Um, 750 and above, obviously, is you no. Know, you touch it, you get it, basically. Um, but there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, not everybody can achieve a 750 right away because it's not that they don't have a credit score. They don't have enough credit history. Credit history right. is a big mark also. So it takes time. It takes time to get there to the 800, 750 scores areas. So it's not that, oh, I have a seven, I have a 735 or 740. Am I doing bad? No, you're not doing bad. You're fine. It just takes time to build history. So And very good. So it takes time for history. A year ahead would be a good time to start improving your score. Definitely start checking your score just to go over everything, points we've discussed. And on the um, building credit, First time home buyers, a lot of them are right out of college. Uh, my son uh, took out a credit card, college credit cards, and is, is, I'm trying to teach him, and uh, he's starting to teach me now how he's building his credit. A lot of people are against taking out or having debt, okay? And sure. my question to you is if you teach your kids zero debt, zero debt, don't get a credit card, uh, is that a problematic thing? Some people say use your debit card you know, and that will show a history. Use your, uh, like if they were to get an apartment, they get a phone bill, they get a, an electric bill. Does that help build your credit or is that not correct information? So a um, couple of things fall into that. Now, debit card will definitely not reflect on your credit score. Okay. It will definitely not do that. Um, having a utility bill, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you, but doesn't really help you because utility bills, cell phone bills, these don't report as positive credit. Right. They report only when you do something negative. So if you gotcha. miss a payment, it's going to report on the credit report. So it won't hurt you to have that, but it does help you in the access that you are building credit, but they're not reporting anything positively. Um, balances wise, if you're trying to build your credit, I always recommend it's important to keep a low balance on there. 10%, 20% just to reflect that you are using your credit because the credit bureaus, they get every cycle, which is about 30 days, um, a score basic uh, a reporting that gives you any latenesses and your right. balances. So if your balance is up in 70% or 80% of your limit, it reflects bad. If there's a balance of zero and you're trying to build credit, it shows them that you're not using your credit at all. So you're not a good, you're not, you're not using your credit. They have the reason you to, you know, keep your highest score. You'll get a high score, don't get me wrong, but it won't be the highest potential score you can get. So if you leave a 10, 20 percent balance, they're using they're they're seeing that you are a good financial risk. Got you. you know how to maintain your credit, you know how to maintain debt, and you're not causing problems where you're at the high blip, uh, maximum limits and you're keeping a low balance. So that's good if you keep a 10 percent, 20 percent. I keep a small balance. Limit. Yep. And uh, I'll try to be quick because I don't want to go too long in this video. Okay. But multiple credit cards versus one credit card, just uh, which about four or five credit cards. Um, maybe three bank cards and one or two store cards that you like to do. 
those are great. Couple more things I want to uh, go into real quick uh, shortly about new home buyers. Um, set up auto payments on your credit cards, but don't set up on the due date. Set up a week beforehand. So in case a monetary bank make sure the payment comes out, because I've had, oh, I have auto payment set up, the payment didn't come out, and I got hit with a lateness. You set up a week before, you have a week's time to catch it up in case the auto payment didn't go through for any reason. Um, okay. Keep low balances as vital. People, what they like to do is, oh, they're getting approved for a house, they'll go shopping. Let me go to get a new couch. Let me right. get this furniture, that furniture. No, I don't yeah. care what the situation sale is. Wait till the keys are in your hand, the documents are signed, then go shop. Right. All right, don't, great. Sorry, don't add any trade lines. Um, I don't care if Macy's handing out 90%. While you're in the mortgage process, don't add any trade lines. It's what do you mean by you. don't oh don't add any new credit, credit cards, cards or loans or anything in that aspect? Not yet. Yes. And the last most important thing, secure your credit from identity theft. Identity yes. theft is huge nowadays. Your identity is stolen very quickly. Your social security number is everywhere and anywhere. Just monitor your credit and make sure be proactive, not reactive. Exactly. That would that should have been the title of this. Uh, be proactive, not reactive on your credit. Uh, I want to thank you, Aman. I'm going to be putting a link to uh, Aman's website in the description of this. And one other thing I want to say is also know yourself, because if you're opening up all these credit cards and you have a history of spending, 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 that might not be the best way for you to you go to go about it. Right. And um, thanks again. This is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes. And thanks for watching. Hello. Yes, I'm talking to you, the person that watched my video to the very end. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like me on Facebook. I am a licensed real estate agent in New York State, but I also have a referral service that deals nationwide. So if you're looking for to buy or sell a house anywhere in the United States, please send me a text, contact me via phone, and I'll set you up with a local professional in your area. If you're in my vicinity, I'd be more than happy to help you out in any of your real estate transactions that you'd like. This is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes, and I'll talk to you soon.